What's going on YouTube? H Dub here and you know we playing Raid. This is going to be a video about Doom Tower secret rooms which you want to be completing if you want an opportunity to get some of the fragment champions. You do have to complete all secret rooms on a rotation in order to complete the Ramon 2 missions as well. So I'm going to go through all of my teams that I use for the Frost Spider rotation. Let's get into it. So the Fall Spider rotation is one of the easier rotations I find. We can go ahead and quickly just jump into the secret rooms. I'm not going to show all of the runs. I just want to show you all of the champs I use and the builds I use. You can use similar applicable champions with similar builds, and it should be able to help you effectively get it done. Now, the first room is Epic Champions only, which I feel like is an easier room for a lot of people. I went in with two Royal Guards, two Husks, and a Yugo, but obviously there are tons of options here. You could bring in, you know, a Godseeker and Neri as a Reviver. You have Rector Draft also as a Reviver. And we can go ahead and just take a look at the gear that I have on these champions right now. So Yugo is in Relentless with decent stats, 61k HP, 265 speed. You know, 319 resist, 334 on the accuracy. This is a Hydra build, Yugo. And these are the masteries that I have on her. Not even fully mastered. She is booked, though. And she is also uh, awakened. She has the Cruelty Blessing. Next is going to be Royal Guard, who I've shown in, in various other videos. I have, a I have a guide on Royal Guard that I'll also link for you guys. But he is in a lethal set. I use this Royal Guard for Fire Knight. 5k attack, 203 speed, 236 crit damage, 288 accuracy just because he does have some debuffs. These are the masteries that I currently have on him. Down into War Master and a support tree because I do want him to land his debuffs. And we get a chance for a, a skill cooldown there. The second Royal Guard is actually built for Hydra. And he's just in mixed sets because I just wanted to get the stats. But... 4.8k attack, 252 speed, 228 crit damage, 277 accuracy. These are the masteries on him. I went down into the defense tree because I used this Royal Guard with a Shamel, so I wanted to get deterrence, but down into War Master T6 again. And sorry, the first Royal Guard has Phantom Touch on just for that extra hit on the shield for Fire Knight, as well as, you know, it's going to scale off of attack. So Phantom Touch is a solid. A uh, blessing to go for on a royal guard. Let's take a look at the husk though. So the first husk is in relentless, also a hydra build husk. 69k HP, 228 speed, 247 crit damage, 285 accuracy because he does have an opportunity to place a stun as well as provoke on the A1, which comes in handy a ton in the Doom Tower secret rooms. This provoke on the A1, you know, husk is going to be used in multiple rooms. Royal Guard is going to be able to be used in multiple rooms. Yugo as well is going to be able to be used in multiple rooms. These are the masteries on the husk. So down into War Master and down the support tree just to get some extra accuracy. The other husk that is being used is just a faster husk. No set in particular, just some mixed sets here with a speed set. And this one has 53k HP. You know, 275 speed, 246 crit damage, 323 accuracy. So you can, you know, just strive for these stats. I'm not saying you need these exact same stats, but, you know, strive for these stats, you know, with your damage dealer, with whoever you're bringing in. And obviously you can bring in a reviver like a God Seeker or a Wreck the Draft, someone else to, you know, just carry your team through. It is a pretty easy room. This Hus has, you know... The exact same masteries as the other one. I just elected to take Spirit Haste on it instead of, you know, Sniper because Sniper doesn't actually contribute. So I should go ahead and adjust the other uh, Husk's masteries. But let's go ahead and take a look at Secret Room number two and the champions I used. So Secret Room number two, champions from the Dark Elves faction only. If you have already completed Faction Wars, this should be fairly easy for you. Also, if you have your Mithrala, it should be fairly easy for you because you're going to have you know, two Void Legendary Champions that you can all already use that are going to be very, very helpful for you. We could bring, bring in a, you know, Reviver and Blind Seer. Royal the Huntsman is also a solid damage dealer to use, but I'm using two rare champions, a Cold Heart and an Eviscerator, who I've done a guide on. She is six-star Awaken, so we can go 
and take a look at the gear. I actually didn't use five champions for this room because I want to, you know, get the lowest turn count that I could. And as you can see, I got it in 25 turns. You got some other options here in Dark Kale, who you're going to get from the normal secret rooms. He is also a really good option to bring in for decrease attack, poisons. He can do some damage for you as well. Caden is also an epic reviver who can be brought in if you don't have blind seer solid option let's go ahead and take a look at the gear that i have on these four champions that i use though so first up is going to be eviscerator kind of just in some mixed sets with a crit damage set and we have a refresh amulet on her total stats 5k attack 177 speed 275 crit damage and you could just get as much crit damage as possible but her aoe ability does you know smack a little bit I do have a six star phantom touch blessing on her so this is actually helping us out a ton these are the masteries that i have not even you know full masteries i didn't farm the rest of them but i took helm smasher because i was showcasing this eviscerator in arena for what her passive ability can do her passive is actually really cool it attacks an enemy champion with a default skill whenever they are healed or receive a buff so she also can proc this in this secret room because you know there are going to be enemies that are receiving buffs and you know if everyone receives a buff she attacks a random enemy cold heart is going to be next everybody's familiar with cold heart but i've just got her in crit damage accuracy and speed she's got about you know 213 on the speed 289 crit damage and a good amount of resist and accuracy she also has the hero soul blessing because i use her primarily in the spider boss and is very helpful there you could elect to take phantom touch but phantom touch scales based on attack and if you're not building her with a lot of attack then it's kind of like almost a waste of a blessing unless you just need like an extra hit in fire knight i don't use cold heart and fire knight though anymore these are the masteries i have on her down into helm smasher I have done a guide on Cole Hart, which you know I will link below for you guys as well. Next up is gonna be Lydia. Lydia is in perception and a protection set, actually. You know, she has blood shield on, she has um refresh on as well. These are her stats though: 240, 258 speed. You know, she's got some crit damage, some crit raid, doesn't really need it. I did have her crit capped for Fire Knight, but I recently swapped her gear because I'm not really using her as much as I'm using Ghostborn there. 310 resist, 303 uh, accuracy. So these are just stats to strive for. And I use these builds in other places. I did not build them specifically for this room, which is why you can, you know, kind of see the very stats. So as far as her blessing goes, she does have Phantom Touch because I was using her in Fire Knight. As far as the masteries goes, these are the masteries that I have on her. I primarily use her in Hydra at the moment. So definitely have to revisit this build, but this is the build that I had and it works. Now, my Mithrala is actually built for Hard Spider 10. So the stats are gonna be a little, a little, you know, over tuned for what you would actually need for this secret room. She's just in Perception and a mix set. She's got a refresh amulet on i mean sorry she's got a reaction amulet on but these are her total stats 53k hp 3.6k defense 300 speed 568 accuracy 216 resist you don't need this much speed this is just how much speed i have on her for hard spider 10 she has brimstone on because i also use her in hydra as well as in my iron twins team these are the masteries that I have on her at the moment. Down into the, you know, Eagle Eye to get extra accuracy. We've also gone down the defense tree just to get her some more heals. Obviously, Resurgent to remove a debuff if a debuff is placed and she gets smacked, but it is unlikely because, you know, she's going to have uh, a lot of resist because of her passive ability, which adds the accuracy to her resist. Let's go ahead and take a look at the third secret room though. So secret room three is going to be defense champions only. And we have Staltus in here. We have a Rima in here. We have a Martyr in here. We have Ignatius and a God Seeker, right? There are a ton of champions you could bring in in place of these champions. Obviously, you could bring in an Ultimate Death Knight who a lot of people have. You could bring in a Contra the Cyclone who is an amazing champion for this room. She was a fusion also. You can also bring in a Rosin, who's going to help you do some damage as well as some turn meter control. 
right? You have a sale of the Drakes, who's also going to be an amazing champion. So this is a room that you can actually do, you know, pretty free to play. Um, Drekstar Blood Twin, also amazing champion you could bring in. So you can definitely do this with a free to play comp with champions that you're going to get anyway with Sil, Drex, if you have UDK, right? Rosin, that's already four of the champions taken care of for you. Helicaf, we have some other champions that are going to be applicable to other rooms like Broodlord, who you're going to be using in the Epic Lizardman room is also a really good option here just because, you know, he has a chance to place a stun. He's got provokes as well. And I've um I've done a guide on him as well. It's on my channel. You should check it out. But we can go ahead and take a look at the gear that I have on these champions and what I used. So Harima, as you may know, if you watch my videos, is in a really overtuned, you know, PvP build, 7.3k defense, 300 crit damage. These are the masteries that I have on her currently. So, you know, kind of standard nuker masteries. I use this Harima for plat push. And like you might not be able to get these stats, but I'm just showing you what you could strive for if you have this champion. You don't have to use this champion, right? You can use, you know, Drex, you can use Sil, you can have UDK in, you can have, you know, other champions that you can bring in that are epics that are going to support you as well. And you can slowly just beat it with HP burn from Drex. I do have Polymorph on her, and this is strictly for PvP. The next champion is going to be Staltus, who is actually doesn't have all this gear on right now. He was in a build for Dragon Heart 10, which I haven't ran in a few weeks just because I haven't needed to. So this isn't his total stats, but it's still like you know, decent stats to not have all of his gear run, right? Um, decent amount of accuracy and resist. He has like no speed on for the build that I use for Dragon Heart 10. Um, and decent HP, decent defense. Here are the masteries that I use on him. So pure support, get him heals. You know, he was in regen when I um, initially did these masteries. So if you're running him like in uh, uh, you know, sets that are going to heal him. Immortal would be, you know, good. Savage is good. Lethal is good. But then, you you know, you're going to want to swap probably to the offense tree and the defense tree. So it kind of depends on the build that you're going for. But I did use him in there. The next champion is going to be Godseeker Aniri, who is in the, you know, standard duo Sand Devil build. 63k HP, 4.2k defense, 269 speed. And she has Survival Instinct on. Um, which just partially fills her turn meter whenever a debuff is placed, spread, or transferred onto her, just so she could take more turns in the Sand Devil. But, you know, there's another blessing that you could take as well that is going to increase the amount of, you know, um, lost HP, diminished HP that she can bring back with her heals. That is also a viable mastery for her. And like I said, guys, I use these champions in other places. I did not build them specifically for this. If I was going to build champions specifically for the secret rooms, my first, you know, option is going to be, you know, immortal regen on as many people as possible for immortal, just so you could slap it on auto and walk away, right? So these are the masteries that I have on her. The next champion is going to be Ignatius, who isn't in a, you know, an amazing build by far. I am primarily bringing him in for HP burn, which is why I say, you know, Drex is an easy swap into this comp because I primarily use, you know, HP burn to get through this when, you know, the nukers were on cooldown. HP burn helps out a ton, you know, just to bring a lot of damage. So he has a little bit of defense, a little bit of HP, mostly high speed so he can cycle through his abilities faster. He also has an AOE provoke, which is very helpful for this room. A little bit of resist and some accuracy as well. These are the masteries that I have on him. This is the build that I was using for one of the Doom Tower bosses. Um, so trying to get him to solo in the Doom Tower in a different build. He had much different gear on when I set these masteries for him. Also for you know hard spider as well. Trying to get him working a hard spider when I was doing a bunch of testing at first. Um, so I did not want to take offense masteries because I didn't want to kill the little spiderlings too quickly. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next champion, though, and that is going to be Martyr, who is just in, you know, some perception, right? She has 218 speed, you know, decent HP, some defense, 
and some accuracy so she can land provokes as well so we're coming in with a lot of provokers right a lot of control here she also plays the counter attack but it's not necessary for this room i have her going down into war master because i do use her against some of the bosses as well and she can hit decently so you know get some war master procs up and just get a chance to extend the duration of the buffs that she puts up and the debuffs that she puts up because she has a decrease defense on her a1 secret room four is going to be epic champions from the lizardman faction only and i have done a full guide on this room already i will link that for you guys in the cards secret room five is going to be the rare attack room and we've got here two cohorts a war maiden and two soul bomb boyers who you know if this is a champion you get early on and you do not have cohort she is going to be great for you in the spider dungeon i would 100 percent invest in her i do have a few copies of you know all of these champions so i have two soul bonds i have four cold hearts i don't have multiple war maidens but war maiden is an amazing champion i don't think you really need multiple copies of her though we can go and look at the gear. Obviously, I showed one of these cohorts already. The second one is in a very similar build as well. And you do not need these blessings, guys. Trust me. People were doing this way before blessings were introduced using these exact same champions. You could also elect to just go with five soul bomb boyers because she is applicable to other Doom Tower Seeker rooms on other rotations as well. So definitely do not need these blessings, though. That's that's all I'm saying. This was easily doable without blessings it's even easier now with the blessings so the two soul bomb boyers are both in stun set because they have aoe a1 so you want to make sure you get them in a stun set with some decent speed this is like the standard build for soul bond in you know hard doom tower secret room so 203 on the speed 238 on the accuracy because you do want her to be able to you know deplete the target's turn meter no masteries on her no masteries on this one either this one is a bit faster though with 219 speed and 252 accuracy they you know could definitely be faster you can also build them to do some damage they can you know help you with damage so if you're able to get damage stats in a sunset that is fine i have a mortal on this one so they can get some heals back this one does not have a mortal it has perception I showed the first cold heart already. This is the second cold heart, which is in a you know similar build. Two perception sets and all the wrecks just mix pieces on them. 245 speed on this cold heart, 270 crit damage, 400 accuracy, with the exact same masteries as the other cold heart. The war maiden is also in a stun set in a speed set, and she has 227 speed. 255 accuracy could be better these are the masteries on the war maiden i probably haven't touched these masteries you know in years so been running these masteries on this this war maiden forever let's go ahead and take a look at the next secret room though so secret room six is the support champions only room and obviously if you have a seer comp built for the waves using kaimars using you know renegades or what have you you can bring in a seer and get it done that way now, Renegade is going to be applicable here. I don't think that you can use a uh, Painkeeper here if you have Painkeeper because she is not a support based champion. You're going to have to use Renegade in there. So you could bring in two Renegades or what have you. If you have Kaimar, bring in a Seer, bring in a Lydia or some other decreased defense champion. You know, Deacon Armstrong is also an option, Stag Knight is also an option, right? If you need someone to play some buffs you got a rector draft who's an epic option you could also elect to do some sort of hp burn and freeze comp you can use mordecai and achok to do like a hp burn freeze comp to get through this room we also have cardinal who is a solid reviver right you can also bring in ursula the mourner solid reviver you have some some decent options here demitha to come in and give you some heals and block damage so i feel like there's a ton of options for this room and everybody should be able to get this room done if you know you have completed faction wars you've made a ton of progress on your account you're already like farming you know ultra nightmare maybe you're doing like a two key even a three key you may have enough support champions on your account 
to come in and you know just get this secret room done there's a whole lot of options i feel like i don't need to show the gear and masteries for these champions you guys know what support champions do if not i just did a full you know walkthrough of all of the epic support you know revivers in the game you should check it out it's on my channel as well as i showed a build for an epic you know support champion and how i would build them but let's go ahead and take a look at secret room seven secret room seven is champions from the high elves faction only this is a faction specific secret room which if you have already completed faction wars you should be able to do if you've already completed your arbiter missions you should easily be able to do you have arbiter there you bring in your arbiter tanky my arbiter doesn't even have all her gear on right now but i'm bringing in two royal guards who i've already showed the builds for a lissandra and a yannica so we can go ahead and definitely take a look at the gear on those champions some other options you can use an apothecary to come in as a healer some people may have a tatura who can come in and help you out with some support if you did the supreme elhane fusion she is an option as well for you but Royal Guards, easy way to go. Yannicka is great. Shermani can come through and do some freezes for you, some, some crowd control to help you through. If you've been playing long enough and you have Alexander, he can come through and place decreased defense AOE for you. So you have a ton of options here, right? Definitely. Diliana was also a login chase champion. So it depends on how long you've been playing the game. If you've been playing the game long enough to get like Alexander and Diliana, you probably don't have any issues with this room. But for people who haven't, you know, Vergus, also solid option. Apothecary, solid option for sure. There are some other options for rares that you might be able to bring in here to help you out. Reliquary Tender is a great option. But this is going to be, you know, pretty easy for most people if you've gotten your Arbiter already. If you've already completed the faction, you could just bring in your Stage 21 team and throw it on auto. Let's show the gear really quickly on the Arbiter, the Yannicka, and the Lissandra. So the Yannicka is obviously in a damage build. She has 6k attack, 260 crit damage. She's very slow. These are the masteries that I have on her right now. Standard Nuker masteries. She has the Soul Reap Blessing. I've already showed the Royal Guard, so let's go ahead and take a look at what the Arbiter has on. And like I said, she does not have all of her gear on. So she's missing two pieces, but she's still like fast enough to do this room. 62k HP, 252 speed. These are the masteries that I have on her at the moment. So, you know, these are kind of standard reviver masteries, if you will. Now the Lissandra, I actually do use, so she should have all of her gear on. But as you can see, guys, I'm completing some of these without like fully geared champions. So she's missing a chess piece. It is being used right now by someone who needs it more, apparently. But she has 50k HP, 272 speed, um, and a decent amount of accuracy and resist in there. You know, if you have a Lissandra, if you have an Apothecary, you can bring in to just keep boosting turn meter, keep, you know, doing turn meter control with an Arbiter. You should take enough turns to get through the waves, slow down towards the end of each wave to make sure you reset the skills of each of your champions, and you should be good to go. I have no masteries on this Lissandra at all, and I've already showed the Royal Guards that I'm using. Oh, one quick note, you know, you could bring in like a Tayrail or someone like that as well for AoE decrease defense. I'm not using decrease defense at all in this comp, but as you can see, there was a team set up for this one where some of the other ones, there was no team set up. This is because this is the exact same comp that I used to farm stage 21. There's no, like if I click on one of the other ones, there's no, you know, all right, that obviously that's my wave clearing farm. So there's a team set up there. There's no team set up for this this one. You know, no team set up for secret room four. There's no team set up for secret room three. So these comps that I already have, like, you know, put together for other places, they're just easily applicable in some of these rooms, which is why I said this is, you know, one of the easiest rotations to clear this one. Now, secret room eight, epic spirit champions only. I used a deacon, a stag knight, a magnar, and a kytus. Now, kytus really underperformed for me. I'm not gonna lie. I was expecting a whole lot more from him. It's probably because I didn't put like amazing gear on him, but I did use him there. 
Honestly, Magnar is the star of the show though. So if you have a Magnar and you just build him really well, you could bring him in with Deacon and Stagnite. It's going to be 100% fine, guys. Obviously, I have a blessing on my Magnar at the moment. You could elect to bring in two Magnars. You could bring in someone like a Fane to also help you out with some single target damage. Orn is really great to come in as a poisoner. You can bring in Lodric, who's going to give your team a shield like every two turns, right? Yep. He has a two turn shield and it's based on his max HP. Build him with really high HP and get him protecting you. You could bring in Volgoff for more heals. Just make sure you put Volgoff in the last spot so that he's healing your entire team. We also have Steel Skull, who is also a great healer and poisoner. So you've got some options here. If you got Crimson Helm, great option. You know, Vergus is also going to be a great option to help your team sustain. But I ended up running it with four champions, and we'll go show the builds on these guys right now. So Stagnite is in a stun set, of course. Stunning speed, 246 speed, 262 accuracy. These are his masteries. I took Warmaster just to get some extra damage output from him. It helps us out a bit. Deacon actually doesn't have all of his gear on at the moment. So, you know, if we just slap a boot on him, we can see, you know, what his total speed would be. Here, take that five-star boot. Don't have him in stun or anything. So 223 speed, 431 accuracy. Don't even have full masteries on him. I've never, you know felt like i needed to get it i don't use him that much actually i primarily use him in faction wars he is booked though kytus i took the piece off of him he was underperforming i put a piece on him tried to build him for this and i was like nah i need to get that back but i did have him with decent stats on he just really underperformed he didn't really bring anything to the comp i wanted to test him out just because i had you know got a decent blessing for him and so I, I ran him in phantom touch but it was just it just wasn't great i don't have masteries on him either so that probably contributed a lot to it and i maybe need to revisit the build but he was a you know he is a option there but he just underperformed so i would definitely recommend that like as far as damage dealers go 100 percent invest in a magnar for this room and just bringing a bunch of support around him and allow him to just, you know, do all of the damage for you. This is my Magnar build. He is in lethal and some resilience. Currently has 70k HP, only 233 crit damage, so nothing crazy. 193 speed. These are the masteries right here. So, you know, some nuker masteries again. And this is actually a campaign farm nuke, you know, and kind of arena hybrid kind of thing going on this is why i have like spirit haste on him that's why i have a uh, whirlwind of death on him as well because i actually used to use magnar as a nightmare campaign farmer um and it's been some time since i used that i do have crushing rend on him um for the blessing but i might change that around a bit um but yeah those are the champions that i use guys obviously there are other options, like I said before, you know, Logic for support. You could bring in Farrakhan the Fat, Ally Attack, you know, Quargan the Crown, also a solid option because he's going to be used in another room if you're doing the Epic Lizardman room. You know, Steel Skull, another option for you for heals. And, you know, there's some solid options that, you know, a lot of people will have on their account if they finish Faction Wars already but let's go ahead and take a look at secret room nine and what i used and the gear that i used so secret room nine is going to be champions from the demon spawn faction only and if you have completed the demon spawn faction wars then you can just come in here throw that exact same team that you used on 21 in here and you should be fine as long as you have a way to deal with the more twos quickly now magnar like i said and we just showed the gear on him applicable to more than one secret room so definitely a great champion to invest in you've seen the build on him the kaimars are fast they're just fast kaimars um, one is for pve one is for pvp and obviously the sissia is you know just in some mixed sets these are her total stats here 60k hp 3k defense 273 speed 397 on the accuracy she is an amazing champion for this secret room you can also bring in you know countess licks is a great champion 
why there's a great champion. You have a lot of good options here. Helicaf can come in and just give you, you know, block damage and sustain. You could bring in a lore for a turn meter control, you know, abyssal in a stun set, just spamming his A1. I've done a guide on him as well. You could bring in a Nizana to help you with some ally protection. You could bring in Akoth and try out a HP burn freeze comp with Achok and Akoth, who is, you know, Akoth you can get from the normal secret room. So some options here for sure. If all else fails, you can always just level up a few Diabolus, which this is also applicable to the faction wars as well. A few Diabolus can come in and just turn meter control them to death, but you will need to have like War Master on a couple of them to start to do damage for you. Now, Drekstar, also a great option here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Sissia build that I currently am running. And this is a build that I run on Nightmare Hydra. So I just showed these stats, but I'll show them again. She is pretty fast with decent accuracy, decent HP. Would love to get some more defense on her. She does have Brimstone on. And these are the masteries that she has. She has a triple hit A1. So we have Giant Slayer. And obviously down into, you know, Master Hexer. Just a, you know, extended duration of the debuff she places. She is going to place HP Burn for us. She's going to be able to place decreased defense and weaken for us if HP Burn lands on everyone. As well as, you know, activating the HP Burn. Has a chance to extend the HP Burn on her A1. So, amazing champion for sure. The Kaimars, guys. I know everybody doesn't have Kaimars, but... You can bring in a ton of other champions to help to support your Magnar in this room. Allure, great option. Like I said, Drekstar, great option, of course. But HP Burn and Magnar, you know, don't always work that well together because it's going to turn his nuke ability into a single hit instead of a double hit. So that is something to be aware of, right? When you're using him, he's going to place an extra hit on enemies without HP Burn. And, you know, has a 50% chance of placing a stun debuff for one turn on enemies under HP burn. So he can place a stun if they have HP burn, but you have to build them with some accuracy to do that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next secret room, though. Secret room 10, which is going to be the HP champions only room. Obviously, I'm using a U-Rost in here. I've got a Tyrant in here as well, who I recently pulled and, you know, just wanted to test out. But there's a ton of options you can use here, right? Black Knight is one of my favorite, you know, champions to use here because he has Provoke on the A1 as well as some heals and increased defense, which can be on a two-turn cooldown book. As far as, you know, epic and more accessible options go, you know, obviously Husk. I have four Husk built. I could have just ran with four Husk. Miscreated Monster is a solid option. Taragi the Frog, also a solid option. We've got Jarig who is a solid option to come in. You can use a Orn as well. You can use, you know, Logic for shields as well. You know, Pain Keepers can come in. You can put some Pain Keepers in Stun Set and, you know, be using their A2, reset each other's cooldowns, go back into the A2, and it's going to help you out a ton as far as crowd control and healing goes. There are also some rare, some other rare options that are going to be applicable in the rare HP room. So Blood Mask is an option who I have built, right? We have a Sentinel also who I've built. You can use Corpulent Cadaver or, you know, Marauder. So these are just some options. Now, you are going to need some crazy gear on these rares to make it happen for the HP Champions only room. I use those champions in the HP, you know, rare room. Gear Grinder is a rare HP reviver, so you can even bring him in with a couple of epics, a couple of Legos, and try to get it done, you know, but there are, you know, a ton of good options here. I would say husks, as many husks as you can, because these guys are going to be, you know, very usable for you in the Hydra boss, also going to be very usable for you here as well, and against some other bosses as well, just because they have an enemy max HP skill. I've also, I've already shown, you know, two of these husks already. I will show you the Uros build, and I will show you the Tyrant build. So you Ross is in Region Immortal, of course, because I use him against the Scarab boss. These are the masteries that I currently have on him. 
As far as the blessing, I do have lethal dose on him because I did uh, test him out in arena in a, in a comp that was actually pretty fun to use. Um, I kind of wish that this was not PVP specific. I wish that this would be for, you know, PVE as well. But sadly, it's only for arena. I didn't go with brimstone on him just because brimstone doesn't do that great of damage. Um, if you don't, you know, reduce that shield, the max HP of the Scarab boss, just from what I've tested, it didn't work out great. So we went with Lethal Dose. Here's the build that I have on Tyrant. He is just in Perception and some Immortal for some more heals. 90k HP, 227 speed, a little bit of resist and a little bit of accuracy. He does not have Masteries. He is also not booked at the moment. Uh, I've recently got him, so I just wanted to play around with him. Had to get him some decent stats because I don't have books or Masteries for him, and it worked out well. I've already shown the build for the first two husks, so here is the third husk that was actually used, and he's missing his boot right now, but I know exactly who has it on. So here is the third husk, just a speed, a perception, and two mixed pieces there. He is crit cap, 242 crit damage, 265 speed, 54k HP, some accuracy so we can land the provoke. And like I said, you know, these husks are built for me for Hydra, so all of my husks are built for Hydra. And they have, you know, similar masteries. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next secret room, though, and what I used. So, epic champions from the Undead Horde faction is secret room 11. And, you know, these husks are coming in through strong again for me. I used four husks and a seeker, right, who is in my clan boss team. This is a great control team. Obviously, everybody's not going to have four husks. If you have one husk that will come in and help you a ton, you can also use a Gorgorab as a reviver and a healer. We also have Maz Mage, who's also a great cleanser, as well as a healer as well. Also has decreased speed on the A1. Volgolf can come in for you and act as a healer as well, as well as do some provoking. And, you know, if you have like Annex, if you have, you know, Dark Elhane, those are other great champions that you can bring in to, you know, assist you. I've already shown all of the husks, so let's go ahead and take a look at the gear that I have on Seeker. So Seeker is in my clan boss team at the moment, um, and he's going to be there for the foreseeable future. And he's just kind of in some mixed sets, crit damage set, perception, two off pieces there, 253 speed, 3.5k attack, 257 crit damage. These are the masteries that I have on him. These are masteries for, you know, an unkillable comp. Clan boss seeker build. If you have a seeker and clan boss, you can use that exact same build. If you're going to build a Gorgorab or a Maz Mage, you're going to build them, you know, with a standard, you know, support build, decent speed, decent HP and defense, and possibly some resist. Now, Gorgorab has an opportunity to remove debuffs on his A1, so you may want to build him with a little bit of accuracy as well. But those are going to be standard support builds that can come in and just like kind of carry you through if you have a good enough build on them where they don't die and they can just, you know, Gorgorab can keep reviving, you know, and Maz Mage can come in and keep cleansing for you and healing you. And he also has some buffs he can place on you as well. So those are two, you know, very solid options. Annex also a solid option. If you're using Annex and Clan Boss, bring that same build in. It's going to be good for you here. But let's go ahead and take a look at the final secret room so the last room is going to be the void champions only room and this is one of the rooms that you could definitely you know get done kind of free to play ish you know if you've completed faction wars you'll have lydia if you've been doing hydra at least normal getting the any chest on normal you you know for a while now you'll have mithrala or you will have your mithrala if you've been doing clan quests and getting clan gold from hydra as well you should or will soon have a yakarl if you've already done your Arbiter missions, you will have a Arbiter as well. So that's already four Void Champions that you can bring into this room to help you out. Seer is also a great champion to use there. We have other, you know, Epic Champions, plenty of Epic Champions that will be great for the Seeker room. Because it's just the Void general room, right? You may have a ton of Champions that you can bring in who can help you to clear this secret room. I'll show the builds that are currently on my champions though that I use. So here's my Sifi. She is really fast, guys. You know, 390 speed, 
decent HP. Here are the masteries that are on her, you know, standard support reviver masteries. Also down the left side to get some more heals from her passive. Seer is going to be a Savage Seer, same Seer that I use on Fire Knight. She does have Crushing Rend, and these are her total stats. So 40k HP, 195 speed, 300 crit damage. If you have a Seer, like any Seer is going to work. You don't need those stats. Those stats are for like the in-game dungeons. This is the... These are the masteries that I have on this seer though. And we're also running a second seer in the comp as well. This one is in lethal, not even crit capped. Don't at me about it. I was using this seer crit capped in faction wars, trying to get like a personal best time. And I since have not even used this seer. I used it in this seer room on auto cause like, eh, she crits so she doesn't crit. It'll work either way. Don't even have full masteries on this seer but I do have a T6 on her. I have not farmed all of these scrolls. And the last champion is obviously Renegade who gets used a lot in Fire Knight 25, not doing hard mode. You know, Fire Knight it is way too overtuned. And this Renegade is in a shield set and she has 205 speed, you know, not crit capped as well, just because I've swapped some gear around at one point or another. <laughs> She does have Phantom Touch as far as the Blessing goes, and Masteries does not have full Masteries either. But those are all the champions that I use to clear the secret rooms, guys, and that is all of the gear that I use. So hopefully that can help you out. You know, if you have any questions about other possible options or if, so, you know, a champion is viable or a team composition maybe you have tried out, definitely comment it down below. I'm open to all questions and I will answer. I do read all of the comments, but thank you guys for your support as always. Don't forget, we do have a gym giveaway going on. If you want to enter the gym giveaway, hop in the Discord. It is going to be over very soon, so you're going to want to act fast. And if you're interested in a starter account, if you are new to the game and you kind of want another account to you know, give you a boost, I'm giving away a starter account. You're going to want to check out my other video for that. So... Until next time, guys, be good and be well.